previously on Roleplay Radio. Good? Kind of go now. So let me get this right. A member of one of the most renowned families in the damn country is sitting in my office asking me for a job? Yes, sir. Whenever I'm out there, it's always a spotlight. And so, doing a job, doing it well, and being left alone sounds really great. Griffin, Griffin. <laughs> Honey, sweetie, baby. Griffin. I've got a little side business going here, Griffin. You understand that? If you're going to join my little family, then you have to be in on this. <sighs> Fine. Great. You've got the job. You're a burning hammer. I mean, this is a goddamn honor. I met that other professor who's uh, also a dampier. Might be just a full-on vampire. He was very, <laughs> very spooky about it. You mean Uncle Julian? Oh, he's your uncle. Yeah, just shh, don't <gasps> keep it to yourself. Okay, okay. The girl in the note. Do you know who they were referring to? Uh, yeah, Rose Pentagon. I'm sorry about what happened to her. D um, I didn't really know her, but it, it sounds like a That's tragic. That's right, we didn't. We didn't know her at all. She was the kindest, most misunderstood person I've ever met, Silvertrope. Gary, aren't you sponsored? Only for the first year. Also, I don't really believe that the Legion is paying. I think that Minnie's doing it. I don't think that they like me enough. I got a letter recently from home. I melted a statue. The goblins are kind of upset. Now asking me to pay back for the restoration of the statue, which I can't do. How much? A hundred gold? <laughs> Actually, I kind of like the idea of him being like, he wanted to be some grand military general, but he got an injury. It's supposed to be honourable, but he feels terrible about it. So his whole big secret is just this shame around it. Right, right. I do like that. Counterpoint, I think that Griff will not play that. <laughs> <sighs> That's fair, what will Griff play? Okay, so maybe if, instead of being in the bathtub playing with boats, he's actually, like, modelling at his money. Shirtless, because apparently that has to be a thing. He's playing with boats made of money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they would float. It's quite heavy. Exactly. It's, it's a it's a great way of establishing his character. Is it? Yes, because then it, it establishes that he values wealth over practicality. Okay, okay. Aurora's in the background. It's just like he could have both piggy banks, uh, boat shelves, put the boats in the backdrop. Can he have a boat shaped bed? Yes. <laughs> a boat shaped bed. All right, so he likes money too much. Yes. Is he outwardly pretending he doesn't like money? Oh no, I think he All does. Right. All right. He flaunts it. That's why Lilith hates him. All I've right. been spending too much time reading this damn thing. All right, so Lilith hates him because he's too interested in money, not interested in people. Yes, Okay. sounds right. Bastian comes in as the counterpoint, as the, the sensitive, people-focused person who Lilith can actually connect with. All right. Though it does seem like our Lilith also kind of likes Griff, so that would be awkward. No, actually, maybe that can work. Add some tension where she's kind of attracted physically to both of them, mm, but only okay. one of them is attracted emotionally. See, I knew I, that it was a good idea to bring you on. <laughs> I'm glad you think that. Oh, I, I'm sure that Professor Zaphi does too. He just has a weird way of showing it. <laughs> Gary, what about you? Gary's probably going to go to Loshiel, try to enlist help making some kind of engine that can be used to help raise the actors up okay. so they can fly. Uh, let's do a Tinker's Tools check with advantage since she's helping you out and guiding you. All right. 19. Oh, Oof. that look, that's great. The yeah. other was a four. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're able to design this pretty quickly, a couple days. Um, at the end of the night, would you like haul this thing around and bring it to the tower or just keep it at Low Shields? I think you would leave it at Low Shields okay. until he has to bring it to the Rose stage. Gotcha. So you've been working late one night and, uh... Actually, could you roll me a perception check? Sure. 14. Okay. To, to backtrack a little, during the rehearsal, everybody was noticing Griff, including the janitors, except one janitor. 
a goblin you notice was staring right at you doing props while mopping. Just like mad dogging you. Right. And nothing happened after that. He just spotted you and was mad dogging you. So t tonight, you finish work on this contraption and you head back to the tower. It's, it's a little late, it's dark out, and you notice that uh, in the living room there is a janitor inside in the common room, but he's got like a little cart with, you know, chemicals and he's wiping the windows. Is this the same janitor? No, different guy. Okay. Also a goblin? Also a goblin. And have we ever seen a janitor in here cleaning before? Nope. They do it during classes so that nobody's home. This is not customary. All right. Spray, wipe, the safe spot, just staring at you. So he's already seen me? He's seen you, yeah. Kind of awkwardly wave. Does not wave back, just keeps cleaning the same spot. Looks sparkling clean. All right. Ah. Uh, I'm gonna go around the side and throw a rock at Griff's window. Does he have a script? Oh yeah, yeah, he's practicing. <laughs> Griff! We have stairs. Now, I know, who's the janitor in the lobby, or the common room? What janitor? The one cleaning the window right now. What do they look like? A goblin? We don't have any goblin janitors. All right, well then somebody's in the tower cleaning the window. Fuck. Um, could uh, you get the others before I go in? Kind yeah. of was staring at me. Uh, hang on a second. I want to throw her, throw Gary down some rope. Okay. And actually, we'll, no, we'll do this dorm style. He's going to tie his sheets together. <laughs> and then throw that out. I don't know how well I'll do at climbing this, but I'll try. Uh, 12 to try and climb oh the boy. sheets. Right. It just takes you a while. You, you climb it fine, but uh... It just, just get some scrapes. It does, up. and you make a lot of noise, I think. So I think the janitor is able to realize that you're doing this. And I think mistake notices, probably. Would you be in the common room? What time is it? I, I was just like assuming it was some, one, of you, one of you guys' rooms that you were doing the... Discussion with mm -hmm. the rewrite. And show yeah, but if we're in like costume room, that's yeah. only the fourth floor. Yeah, you hear the uh, Gary's boots like smacking against the <laughs> tower wall and, and whatnot. <laughs> Look out the window to see what the noise is. Hello, Gary. Hi. What? What? What's going on? You see Someone in name. the common room. And that's why you're sneaking into Griff's room. They were staring at me scarily. <laughs> I'll go check who it is. Well, I feel like maybe we should game plan before we go, before we go do this. Uh, because apparently it's... We're all together now. Hold on. Oh, I think we're, we're like down leaving, down we're leaving <laughs> out the window. So we're like the floor right above you. All right. <laughs> you throw us your bed go. sheets. <laughs> and we'll climb up to your <laughs> two of us go down the stairs yeah. to your room. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. I feel like Griff would want to kind of take charge because it's like you're not a janitor. You're pretending to be a janitor. That's his thing. Mm -hmm. So, but we're not supposed to be cleaning inside at this hour. At least the dorms. Uh, he was also kind of staring me down. Okay, um, so let's just go ask him what what's going on. Or we could beat him up. Why would well, we beat him we up? We should probably talk to him first. If he's just being nice and cleaning our dorm room, then it's been a while. Do you think he's just... an auric? I'm... I mean, it's possible that anybody could be an auric, but I don't think we should assume that. I just want to point out, Shelly's at work today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's not true. Uh, I, I, I was gonna say, oh, Shelly's probably just past the fuck out. <laughs> no, she's, all, she's like on duty uh, at the Dragon's Guard. Every now and then they throw them at night shift. Okay, I will go downstairs and talk to them. And if... Talking doesn't work. We can have the f Fantastic Four come on down. Uh, wait, take this. And uh, Gary is going to give Griff an elixir of resistance to drink. Oh shit. What does this do? <laughs> I, I think it will make you stronger. Or? <laughs> uh, hopefully nothing terrible. Okay. 
So he's gonna pop it. <laughs> actually, actually, you know what? He's gonna hold on to it and make it look like he's just been drinking something. Okay. All right. And he's gonna walk over to to the goblin janitor. Okay. We'll sneak down the stairs behind. <laughs> All right, so the three of you are, are, are sneaking. Well, uh, some of us are sneaking. I'm sure Gary's doing his best. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you drunk this? No, I'm about to. Okay, as a uh, slight side effect, it tastes like chalk. You have forgotten everyone's name. <laughs> 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 Fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. Okay, hey, you, you know? He was uh, mopping, not doing a great job at it. Oh. <laughs> Sorry to say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, uh, just started. Name's Grooks, nice to meet ya. Perception, or insight check. It's gonna Mistakes also holding thaumaturgy to slam the door shut if he tries to leave. I am also gonna roll insight from afar. Actually, I think this, this one would be perception, because I'm looking at his janitor stuff to see if it looks like typical janitor stuff. Oh. Could I have advantage on that because I have the janitor stuff? Like, yeah, oh, yeah, no. yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. good, because my perception's sense. a minus one. Look at this. 14, 13. Okay, okay, and then... 11. It's <sighs> really good fake. Mm -hmm. I mean, he looks like a goblin to you, Cos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing weird. Griffin notices he's wearing the uniform, mm. he's got the badge, He's got the equipment even, you might recognize some of it. I assume that you guys share this equipment and you're just like, all right, you need one bottle of this, one bottle of that, one of that. It's got the labels on it. It was legit. And what's his name again? Grooks, G-R-U-U-X. Okay. Oh, sorry, uh, what was all that clutter up there? Oh, uh, you know, I, I, I was working out and I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the, the school play. And so I was reading the script in one hand and lifting weights to the other, and it just kind of like slips out. Oh, my, yeah. my hands get really sweaty. I get you. I, I lift. What do you lift? Oh, weights. Well, we, right. Well, like, you know, what's your max? Well, oh, for your max bench max. I mean, like, 100, 120, depends. Oh, so you work on it. the day. Yeah. Oh, I'm just trying, you know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, hey. Hey. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yeah, no, we've done that. Uh, what can I do you for? Well, I know it's funny, because, uh, <sighs> I'm a janitor, too. Uh, my yeah, my yeah. uniform's right upstairs. But it's weird, like, we, we don't do this stuff at night. Here in the oh, dorms, at least. So who gave yeah. you the, who gave you the duty? Yeah, who, I mean, who are you I, talking to? I totally hear you. I just, uh, you know, I can't work during the day. You know, I got, I got glaucoma, allergies and all that. I specifically said, hey, I, I'm willing to work. I want to pull my weight, but I, I got to do night shifts. I can't do no day shifts. Yeah, so, no, no, I get that. But it's weird they put you on the dorms because you don't do the dorms at night. You know, it's like, it's like a privacy oh, thing. Yeah, you know, I'm just going to be done here in like 15 minutes. Uh, well, cool. you know, actually we're all starting to wind down now. And so we kind of want people who are part of the dorm just to kind of head out. So would you it be gotta, cool? You got to talk to Fane for that. You know, I, I got to do my job. Sorry, I'll man. I'll tell you what. Sorry. I'll tell you what. We can, we can do that in the morning because I am meeting with him. I just, mm. you know, need you to kind of just move on. We, we can take care of the rest of the morning. I appreciate it. We'll let, you know, we'll let him know that you were here. You did your duties. It's just, you know, it's like a comfort safety thing. Yeah, you know, comfort safety, same, yeah. you know, I hear you. Mm. So he starts, he starts to drink yeah. the, the elixir. <laughs> Might want to stop uh, shoving me there. Sh well, I, don't, I really don't like when people shove me. I'm just trying to do my job. Man. Oh, I, I know that, but this is our dorm. And you don't live here. Mm. I'm asking you kindly. Okay. Well, I'll ask you kindly. Can we talk to your friend that you just helped? Uh, that you just helped climb up to your room? That's so all. We just want to talk to he's him. He's going to grapple and grab him by the lapels and shove him up against the nearest door. <laughs> and then he's going to do a daunting roll. He and fails. I know you're not a janitor. I know you probably don't even work here, maybe. So before I bite your fucking head off, why don't you tell me what you want with my friend? And he's terrified. And so it, you're trying to get away from me. Yep. So that causes a conundrum, I suppose. On the staircase, uh, Kasa is just going to whisper to the other two, we need to get him to channel this during the play. That escalated quickly. What did I do? Is this have to do with the statue? Oh, 
You know, that actually would make a lot of sense. Uh, oh! Maybe, maybe we just listen, see if he's us. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, you just, you just pinned him against the wall. You roared, you said these things to him. He looks terrified. He's trembling. He dropped whatever he was holding, and he says, All right, all right there, fella, look. I don't want any trouble, all right? I'll get out of your hair. I'm reasonable. Thing is, uh, my three friends ain't, and they're holding steady at my call. I ain't gonna call them if, if, if you just let me down, okay? Otherwise, you're about to get hurt very quickly. Can you threaten me while you're afraid of me? How He's not threatening you, he's just, in fact, if anything, he led you in on information. That's true, no, that's very true. I was making sure I didn't... I... So how's about, you know, just just send me down, I'll get out of your hair. I, you know, my friend's really gonna... They're not gonna stop wanting to talk to your friends, so you might as well... And talk about what? That's personal business. I bet it is. Okay, adept. It's adept, okay? It's adept. Adept? Yeah, that's what the... That's how you pronounce it, right? Debt? Debt, debit? A debt? Like De owing somebody? I always thought there was a B there. Okay. Was, yeah, a debt. What is my friend D -E -T, owe? D-E-T, debt. What does he owe? Well, money. How much? Hundred gold. For what? Well, for Crockton's health, ironically. <laughs> he blew up his statue, okay? And we're from the guild, we were told to come here and collect. Should, 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 should you go down? Well, I melted it. I didn't blow it up. Also, I'm having trouble breathing here. That's, that's fine. You can talk. You can. I'm breathe. turning green. You're you're a goblin. Yeah, I, I should. That's be racist. Exactly. But you you I are literally green. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Gary comes down the stairs. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Thank the gods. Uh, hey, Gal Galray, right? No, you're you're gonna talk directly to me uh, until my friend tells me that you can do otherwise. Can, can you tell he your do friend? otherwise? I mean, he's put he puts his hand over. His <laughs> um. Yeah, they're probably just gonna come back anyways, so we might as well talk now. So he can- Okay, shut up. I'm gonna- shut up. Great. <gasps> He's still gonna hold it. My nose is clogged up, you can't do that shit to me. I can do anything I want to you in my house. Okay. Gare. Gare, can you tell your friend here to let me down? Um. I'd rather not. I'm not very comfortable with you showing up here or with the threatening letter that you sent me. Well, see, I would call that far from threatening, right? I mean, come on, we're just playing around, right? Shake some. <laughs> okay, okay, we weren't playing around, we weren't playing around, okay? Uh, boss says that you got, we gotta collect, and you know, boss says he... We, we can't leave here without at least like 80%. I don't have 80 gold. Well, what do you have? I have 40 gold. Shit, that ain't gonna do it, Gary. How much gold do you have? Not much. You hear a snicker. Empty your pockets. In the corner of the room. Ooh. Gonna check the corner of the room. I'll also going to thaumaturgy all the windows and doors shut. Nice. That's a 13. That, that's pretty good. And you know this room really well. And so you, when you hear the snicker, you, you know pretty much where it came from. But you don't see any humanoids there. No one whatsoever. I'm going to whisper to Koss that I think there's at least one invisible someone here. Like, actually invisible, not just disguised as a broom. Pretty <laughs> sure. Okay, I can finally do this then. Uh, come out, come out wherever you are, and I will cast Fairy Fire right in that area. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, what it looks like is it is just kind of like a moat of light that goes out from the and then like it does this like dull explosion into a puff of sparkles that outlines all of the objects in the area. So I rolled a three. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And any invisible creatures are outlined by that as well and can no longer benefit from being invisible. All right. The, this green and pink light hovers over this uh, short humanoid figure that is standing on top of this bookshelf. There's a couple of books on top of it too, and he's standing on the books, so it might even piss off mistake a little. And he is holding a crossbow. So, uh, Gary, look, come on, man. We just came to collect, right? You won't kill the messenger, right? I can't give you money that I don't have. Oh, but your friends can. Right, rich boy? 
You know, you can take out a loan from the rich boy and then you go in debt with him and you don't I'm have- I'm not a big fan of this name calling. And I'm not the Wait. person to name call. You didn't tell me your name, I'm sorry. What's your name? Mm -hmm. I'm Grooks. <laughs> <laughs> So what do we do about the situation, Gary? I mean, uh, and you hear another snicker from the other side of the room. She's like, God damn it, shut up, boys! Well, like I said, I can give you 40 gold, and I can't give you more than that. And I would really prefer it if you didn't attack us. Yeah, I would prefer it too, but if uh, we don't do nothing, the boss is going to do worse to us. So... <laughs> How much did you need? Cost calls down from the staircase. Ah, more friends to get loans from, huh? <laughs> Their cover blown mistakes just going to inch closer to this guy yeah. with uh, the rapier. The crossbow like turns towards you, and you just hear, "That's far enough." <laughs> and Grooks is just like, "Yeah, uh, you know, we we ain't really messing around here." He's having trouble leading now that he's terrified of Griff, but he's trying to get the message across like We ain't leaving without our 80 gold to start Hell my They said if you resisted to up the price, but I'd be okay with 80 <laughs> If you up the price, you're even less likely to get it. How did you even get into the school? <laughs> Okay, we have friends. <laughs> Who? Nice friends. This is an intimidation check. Who are your friends? <laughs> Ten. Oh, yeah, great. nah. Okay. I might be terrified of you, rich boy, but I ain't no traitor. Alright? I'll stay zipped. I, I'm getting impatient. I don't want to pay anybody. Frankly, you... Actually, how far is Dapplewig's place? <laughs> Across the student towers for sure, and across the archway commons we've established. Yeah, it's, so like, it's it's a bit of a walk. Gary, you're the offending party here. Do you want to just pay them, or shall we mess with them some more? Well, I mean, it's just the statue melting happened months ago, and they didn't even ask for payment until now. I thought the whole thing was settled. How did you settle it? Uh, I don't know. Minnie said don't worry about it, so I didn't worry about it. Well respected within the engineers, but... Oh yeah, we paid her a visit, all right? <sighs> See, the thing is, if we don't collect, Gary, Guild is not just gonna come after you, they're gonna come after Minnie. <laughs> Gary throws a stone. Mm. And now we're rolling initiative. <laughs> okay, that misses real bad. It is a nine. So you just hit Griff in the back of the head. <sighs> Sorry. And then he realizes what you just tried to do. He's like, you just attack me, boy. All right. Boys, don't shoot to kill, but rough them up a little bit. And then we're oh, in initiative. My favorite words. <laughs> Mistake. Just Jesus. gonna run over here, jump up on this table, and stab him. Okay. That is an 18 to hit. That hits. The fairy fire, uh... That stays. That stays? As long as I'm concentrating. But where there was a hollow space, there now, like, appears a goblin holding a crossbow. The goblins are next. That goblin is immediately going to, like, drop his crossbow, sheath out a dagger, and go for the gut. <laughs> go for the gut. It just completely misses. However, he will disengage as a bonus action. Since you're on the table, he runs through your legs and just, like, scurries out of the way. At the same time, two other goblins appear. Gary you get hit with a uh, taste of your own medicine. You don't see this at first. You just see the yellow liquid just shooting out of what where there would be a pipe into the air like a fountain heading straight towards you. That is a 13. Is a 13 hit? Yes. Eight points of acid damage as this uh, acid rains down on you and gets all oh. over your arms and starts burning through your clothes. Meanwhile, Griff, are you still grappling this guy? Never let him go. He's going to try to get out of the grapple. No, he won't. Oh, with a six. He tries to wriggle his way out, and he, he doesn't make it. And then lastly, uh, I think Mistake's going to take this one. You feel an intense heat behind your neck as a sacred flame gets shot at your direction. That is 16. So you are good. However, the books do catch on fire. Griff, you're up. 
so he's gonna hold this goblin whose name he can't fucking remember. He's going to go for a one hand strike, so he can still hold him. Nineteen Ooh. plus five is twenty four hit. Barely, but yeah. <laughs> okay, Gary. I think that Gary's going to attack the one that just hit him with poison, and he's gonna get out his baster of food poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> Which is Ray of Sickness, but you know. Mm-hmm. 23 to hit. Woo! Nice. Uh, well hit. He was just holding his little tube that he shot the uh, the acid with, and he's like ready to reach for another bottle when suddenly like, it doesn't feel too good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm imagining he just pukes as a side effect of oh. this happening to him. Koss. Um, Koss is going to drop Fairy Fire and instead is going to cast Silent Image and create a revolving disco ball around Gary and Koss. And then also like kind of give Gary a squeeze to just be like, this is an illusion. (laughs) Nobody can see us, but we can see through disco ball because we both know it's an illusion. All right. And as a bonus action, Koss will shout from within the disco ball, Mistake! You're a great writer and even better at fencing! (laughs) (laughs) So she's on this table. Books behind her are on fire. The person she's going after bolted over that way. So, she's gonna do is just drop down off the table from where she is onto the arm of the chair that's right next to it such that the chair tips over and uses the chair to steady aim with bow. Okay. That is a 15 plus 5. That is. Woo! Wait! <laughs> now I'm going to phrase this very carefully. How do you down him? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to say like this chair that he's right next to was actually kind of pulled out. She pins him like right at the shirt collar to the chair such that it cuts his neck. Mm. Leaves the reminder that mm, that could have been your throat, buddy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's immediately like pulling out like rags like applying pressure, like I'm down, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> he drops his dagger. <laughs> He's like, nope, not worth it. Especially uh, this te- red tiefling that's yeah. backed by flames right now. <laughs> like that's terrifying. <laughs> not in a fuck with her. The goblins are next. I'm gonna start with Grooks. He is going to try to get out of your grappling. <laughs> Seven that one. That's Beautiful! <laughs> Alright, rich boy. You asked for this, and he just like <gasps> skinny just slides right down Hands uh, out of your... together. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of just like nimbly escapes. Meanwhile, Gary, you're gonna get hit by the alchemist again. Who you just made him have explosive diarrhea. <laughs> also, he cannot see Gary because Gary's in a uh, big disco ball. Yeah, but like, I feel like he's gonna go for it. He's, he's, he's gonna just risk it because he knows that Gary's in there, so it'll be with disadvantage, but he'll still try. So he pulls out another vial, gulps it down, and then just uses his tube again to shoot. 11. That's my AC. Ah. So the, uh, the liquid goes through the illusion. He doesn't know whether he hit, but he just goes, and then the thing lights on fire. So it's a fluid that hits you at first, and you're just like, what? And then the other guy is going to aim at mistake. He hurls more flame at you after you have you have him down his buddy. Dexterity saving throw. Uh, that's an 18 plus that's nice. five. Can we please just say that he like panics, throws the sacred flame, and you just you don't move. It just yeah. makes the backdrop more. <laughs> <laughs> so like the snake doesn't move and then realizes, wait, that hit more books. <laughs> <laughs> now she's just really pissed at this guy. So Griff. You smell fire? <laughs> a lot of fire. In fact, you might see some smoke coming out so of the So I disco see a fiery ball. disco. You're like, disco Inferno. I'm seeing a disco Inferno. <laughs> um, chromatic Orb, he's gonna do cold damage to prevent more fire damage. So he's gonna twin it, and the way that he twins it is like he holds the ring out, but then like he just puts like a little claw up there. <laughs> to split it, to, yes. s- to split it. <laughs> nice. Can I make it non-lethal? Because I want to keep Grooks alive because I want answers. Oh, he's still alive. Okay. You do hit them both, they both like start shivering and layer a frost on their skin. And you hear Grooks being like, the hell you get that from? We, we'll take that as payment, that ring. 
as you near the disco ball, you hear Koss whispering from inside, It's an illusion! Oh, thank God! <laughs> <laughs> I thought I drank something see, weird! And you can see into the disco ball. Where Gary's just on fire. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Gary is next. Yeah, he just thought it was the elixir. Am I, like, on fire, like I need to use so, an action to stop, drop, and roll? Yes, and actually, you take three points of, of fire damage. Doing it. Don't want to die of fire. Don't die, Gary. That's an eight. Oh, which is a seven. seven. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm you have still a bonus action. You want to do something? I pull out a little uh, vial, and uh, when the cork comes off, it just goes fuck him, and it's <laughs> it's healing word in a vial. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna drink it. it, partially choking as you're drinking it while rolling on the ground. Yeah. Cross your own. Okay. So first things first. Cost is going to look at Gary and just say. I just want you to know, uh, this is the hottest you've ever looked. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and give you inspiration, so... I'm working on the compliments. <laughs> yep. How is your head? <laughs> on fire! Cool! As long as it's not hurting psychically. <laughs> Koss is going to look over towards the one that just completely whiffed mistake with Sacred Flame. They'll say, keep it up! I'm sure you'll hit something someday! Yeah. <laughs> Four psychic damage. Piss off! And by the way, what this looks like to this person, because they haven't seen through the illusion yet, is a panel on the disco ball opens up and costs his head. Shut up! <laughs> That's beautiful. Shut up! I, I could hit somebody if I wanted to. The boss winked at me once. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm tough. Okay. Mistake. So I'm going to attack the guy in the fireplace that's already been hit by a couple things, and I'm using steady aim to give myself advantage. Twelve. No. Oh, but he will have to make a con save. Save is for zero, nine. Nine will fail, so actually what happens is that even though the arrow might miss, the like little moat of inspiration that's been hovering around you goes with the arrow and then explodes in sound, so he's going to take two points of sonic damage. Oh, all right. <laughs> So, what you see, the chimney guy, he's clearly a spellcaster. So he starts moving his um, his hands around. He's doing some kind of magic on Grooks. He's like, Grooks, you know what to do. He returns his eyes to his faux mistake, but jumps off the chimney and is going to take some cover as well behind the piano. Alchemist is next. He hops down from the bookshelf holding his uh, belly. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's not feeling very well, but he's going to walk around the disco ball, try to, uh, I smell ya, Gary, and <laughs> throws more acid your way. That's Yay. a four plus uh, five, so nine. Acid just splashes on the ground next to you. <laughs> <sighs> Finally, Brooke is going to take a few deep breaths, run up back to Griff. Yeah, come at me. You see that uh, his eyes are glowing with something or other now that his buddy did something to him. He's on drugs. And he is going to reach in for your hand and do a sleight of hand check. You could do a dexterity saving throw. He's going to try to take my ring? He's going to try to take your ring. Uh, I'll be fucking pissed. Mm -hmm. You have to beat an 11. It's not a hard feat. Do you still have inspiration? Six. So uh, the goblin reaches up, doesn't say a word, just gives a yank and one of your knuckles just cracks as you feel the ring sliding oh, off. I have to kill him. Griff is next. <sighs> I'm gonna spend two sorcery points to do quicken spell. So I'm gonna use two spells against him. Very well. Cause he's fucking pissed. Okay, do me a favor first. No, you took my ring. I did take your ring. However, he has a spell on him. Yeah. Make a wisdom saving throw for me. No. 15. Damn, you passed. <laughs> oh. It's sanctuary. You would have had to have been forced to pick a different target. But no, you you are pissed. You really are pissed. Mm -hmm. So like he just steps there and he's going to... <laughs> oh, he's so angry. <laughs> Shatter. I can cast in the middle between the two of them so it actually hits mm -hmm. both because it's a radius. You're oh, fucking with the wrong Leonin. <laughs> that's okay, that's... that's that's Brooks. And this time he's going to kill him. Oh. He's angry. You took you took his you took his family ring. Accidentally or on purpose? He's angry. It's on purpose. You took his family ring after you broke into his home and you threatened his people. I didn't break any of your fucking statues. You fucked with me. 
You. Whoa. You. <laughs> I sense that Tyler's angry at me. I'm so excited to kill. Okay. <laughs> All right. How do you how do you down both of them? This one, I just take his head. And his head pops. And this one, he has a heart attack and he dies from fear. You killing both of them? Both of them. They're both dying today. Okay. Oh boy. Oh, that's that's rough. Oh, that yeah. heightens things a bit. <laughs> yeah, 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 it does. As this guy died and his head blew up. Yeah. Griffin, god damn it. He falls face forward and the ring just topples over next to your feet. So you have it back. Uh Gary, wow, that was yeah. I don't think Gary saw that. No, he definitely the didn't. Shatter. Uh, Gary, Gary's still trying to not be on fire, so he's just rolling around on the ground. I think at this point, most of his uniform is like, Singed, yep. yeah, not really together anymore. Stop the fire. Nope. It's an eight. Wow. He is oh, still on fire. Oh, so but sorry. on the plus side, you get four temporary hit points for using the inspiration. Well, that's the something. Throw. He'll go up the stairs a little bit and then probably see dead goblins and start screaming. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Koss. Uh, Koss hears Gary screaming, so immediately goes up to be like, what's going? Oh my god. That, that, that's a lot. <gasps> Griffin never actually killed the guy before, and so like he's he's starting to come down. He's like, oh fuck, fuck. Why, <laughs> Gary? Don't die. Have another healing word. <laughs> Cost is going to uh, peek their head out of the disco ball at the alchemist and just say, uh, "Hey guy, you might want to get going. Your friends are kind of uh, fucked up." And I'll cast Dissonant Whispers. My friends are what? <laughs> <laughs> Mistake. Um, there's a stairwell in the way. So I don't think Mistake has any idea what's going on. You just heard Koss freaking out and Gary freaking out. Yeah. So you don't know what's up behind there. So I think Mistake's just uncertain. Not sure what's going on, but gonna continue with trying to disable people. Is going to steady aim and fire at this guy. All right, well, one of those is an 18. Ooh. All right, how do you down him? <laughs> um, <laughs> looks right at Griff. God damn it, Tyler. <laughs> uh, I think very similarly, except, so this guy's an alchemist. I'm picturing he has like a belt with different components and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that drops to the ground and it snags his clothes and sticks him to the bookcase. And he is down. I think pretty almost immediately because there's fire in the living room. There was scuffling. There's fuck all mistake can do about fire. Yep. So you hear the flapping of wings coming down the stairs. No, oh, no. It's a bat that uh, yeah. flies past Gary, <laughs> morphs into Aurora right at the base of the stairs near Griff. Like, what the what the fuck have you done? And the background is just mistaking like fire, fire, fire. <laughs> <laughs> Griff. Somebody deal with the fire. Griff is thinking of his uncle and is really worried that, oh shit, maybe his uncle is a killer because I'm a killer. Yep, Aurora standing next to you, staring at these two dead bodies. <laughs> Mistake just runs past into the kitchen, <laughs> starts running water, completely tunnel vision on, need to put the fire out. <laughs> How do you put your fire out? <laughs> oh shit. Just trying to I'm pat it help. down. I'm, I'm, help, I'm helping to pat Gary yeah. down. Mistake has got, I'm picturing there's like a big <laughs> yeah. cauldron that she can fill with water, come back here, pour it over the books. Mm. Is this like multiple cauldrons full of water to I think put that, this out? And or? Aurora's helping you with uh, like gust of wind as well yeah. to like put it out as fast as possible. And then once that's no longer on fire, that's when Mistake comes over here with the cauldron turns to like talk to Griff and Aurora, sees the dead people, and just drops the cauldron. Yeah, Griff is just staring. And Aurora next to Griff, uh, really shocked. I've seen some fucked up shit in my life, Griff, but this, she steps away from you. He's gonna run their pockets for like ID. And then he's gonna walk himself to Dapplewing. 
Hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't, don't be, don't be stupid. Griff, you're gonna, you're gonna be done. You realize that? You're gonna be out of this school. That's not, this is not, uh... Shh. Aurora's not one to be scared. She's always very confident and, you know, upright. This has shocked her. So she's kind of at a loss for words and her mind's reeling. What did, first of all, how, who are they? Uh, they're from Ravnica. And you know they, them? They just wanted money. That's, that's all they wanted. They said just rough them up. And why the fuck didn't we just... Oh. I'm assuming that ten minutes has passed. Yeah. So the, the chalkiness goes away, the memory comes back, and Griff is like, They... Uh, that's... Grux. Uh, was. Yeah. He... Impersonated a janitor. So you blew his head off? Broke into our home. <laughs> Threatened Gary and me. Then the fighting happened. And then he took my family ring. And then I got really angry. Uh, we can't deal with this. We need to get the Dragon's God. And what? Gary's gonna try to leave unless yeah, someone stops him. Yeah, Nick has been like backing away from this whole thing, like freak the fuck out. Uh, right oh. as you're about to open the door, he's like, wait! Uncle Julian, it's nighttime. He's up. Revivify. We can fix this. We can, we can fix this. You, I don't know what kind of fucking inner rage you got going on, but you need to deal with it yeah. in your room and no dapple wing. That is the last person we need to go to right now. But I do need help carrying these things covertly. I wish Shelly were here. <laughs> can we? So he goes up to Or do room. you insist on Dragon Scar? No, if you can bring them back, that seems like the best thing we could do. I, I can make us a chest to carry them. <laughs> And Cospel paints a very nondescript looking chest big enough to carry two <laughs> jubilant oh. bodies. God damn it, this, this, this is, oh, whoa. Now, I think Aurora would insist on Griff staying here to cool off, mm. but also I think Griff, I, Alex, think Griff should deal with this too firsthand because you're the one who did the deed and, yeah. mm -hmm. and Professor Valentin's not going to, like, mm -hmm. He wants to know who the fuck did this first before he does anything. I'll go. I, I hate to be the one to mention this, but Revivify only works on people who, are, who have died in the last minute. Gentle repose. That's a cantrip that's. Aurora, Aurora can have yeah, okay, cool. yeah. Aurora okay. can <laughs> That's fine. Oh, good. <laughs> Glad we have some necromancers. <laughs>so what's happening here? There are two that are still alive here. Oh yeah, yeah. What uh, are we doing with them? We can tie them up. I can. Mistake definitely offers to stay behind. Yeah. Though is very uncertain about that. It's like, do I want to stay here with the blood stains in the wood, or do I want to go there with the dead bodies? So is mistake staying behind to watch them? Um, probably. And press to digitate the blood off the floor. It's a good call. I, I think that the only one who doesn't have a job is Toby. So I think that Toby at one point might come down and see this and be very confused, but we're, we're gonna get to that. Okay, three of you with Aurora take the two dead bodies uh -huh. to Wither Bloom. Are you guys talking to Griff at all the whole time, or is it a very awkward walk? No, no. it's a very awkward it's walk. Extremely awkward. Okay. okay, so then Aurora tries to make small talk with you two. I have so many questions, but I'm scared to ask. I don't particularly want to answer right now. Maybe we talk about this later. Yeah, once, once we um, I, you know, fix the situation. Sure. sure. Uh, can I just ask one thing? Sure. Did they deserve it? Um, not really. They, they, I mean, they were thugs, but I'm pretty sure they weren't going to kill us. And you make it to Professor Valentin's um, treehouse. <laughs> Not up high, just at the base of a giant tree. Uh, she does some kind of secret knock. 
and uh, Professor Julian opens the door. Ah. Come in for the morning tea, huh? Come in. See you brought company. She, she's just like, I'm gonna let you guys do the talking. And she just stands back. Okay, um. Oh, you brought me a gift. Yes, um, not, not, not exactly. Um, listen, we need your help. There was a fight at the tower, and some things got out of hand, and um, some people might have died. And Aurora says that, that you can help us to, to bring them back, so can, can you um, help us fix things? He leans in. I'm, I'm sorry. You. Some people might have what? Died. Open it. He stands up from his chair. Griff will open it up. Very somberly. <sighs> Legally, I am obliged to report you. You know this, yes? Yes. He looks at Aurora. But given that we're a family here, his stare at Aurora turns into a glare. He walks by her and you hear him whisper like, that's one less favor from me, girl. <laughs> he like rolls up his sleeve. These aren't students. Where are they from? As he's getting ready to do his thing. Uh, <laughs> we, we don't know how they got in. They're from Ravnica. They were trying to get me to repay a debt that I owe them, apparently. Intruders. They broke in. Dressed like janitors. Well, this, the one without a head, was. Violence broke out because they threatened Gary's person who, I guess, sponsored him. The fight started, and then he holds up his broken finger, and then they took my family ring, and I lost control. As you were talking, Aurora was bringing over like dozens of little potted plants, um, laying them around her uncle who is now like sitting cross-legged in front of these two dead bodies. And to your surprise, you, you get a look of sympathy from him or maybe pity. He's not mad. He's just like, thank you for admitting. That takes strength. I sincerely do have more questions and I will ask them, but first things first. And so he, his hands hover over the plants one at a time. As they do, the, the plants shrivel and, and begin to decay at a very, very rapid pace. His hands turn to green and you see his veins pop up. You, it's almost like the energy is transferring from his hands up you know, to his chest. All the veins in his neck are turning green as well. And then he goes, Normally, you'd have to be a higher level year to see something like this, so consider yourself lucky. Now, we're gonna cut to mistake. <laughs> mistake stared at the pool of blood for a while and was overall very unhelpful and sort of like a catatonic state. Uh, has definitely never seen someone be killed before. Mm. She eventually kind of came to well enough to offer to stay and look over everything. Then kind of zones out until the door slams shut so the others leave. That snaps her out of it enough to clean the floor of the blood with prestidigitation. You hear uh, gentle footsteps going down the stairs. <laughs> He's singing one of the Casa's songs. Oh. When all of a sudden the, the singing slows and comes to a halt. What? Is that singed? Wait. <gasps> Meanwhile, Mistake's grabbing the two goblins and is bringing them over to the <clears throat> uh, fireplace and sticking them on the couch there. What are you doing? Who's that? Oh, why? Huh? <sighs> 
that from Ravnica came to talk to Gary. Uh, they didn't like being told no. So now they're taking a nap. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, b- b- he looks up at Mistake very timidly and salutes. Be really, s- please don't do that. Be squat to, to the rescue. Okay. And he grabs a mop and starts helping you clean. Well, it was prestidigitation, so it oh. just cleaned it. Okay. But all of these, this area is still charred where the books were on fire. Okay. So he's going to go over to the books and just start organizing them <laughs> and like... <laughs> Da- damaged versus not damaged and the piles. He's gonna try to be helpful in one way or another. Uh, oh, it's so sad. Oh. You don't have to do that, do you? No, no, I want to. I want to. Be squat. Be squat. <laughs> I'm helpful. <laughs> you know you know where Shelly is, right? You, you... Shelly, they're at work. Right, right, right okay. You okay? No. What? Constitution. Like... He vomits over one of these pots. <sighs> Is vomit compostable? I... Probably. It's just food and stomach acid. Is it burnt books that you really don't like? Because that's more of a severe reaction than I get when I work in a library. No, I just don't like... Violence, but I'm sure they deserve it. <laughs> you know, uh, we're not going to discuss that right now, do we? Okay. Fair, fair. You all right? No, not really. Good, me neither. Great. <laughs> How can I help? Well, you know, I was thinking about waking these two and having a chat with them. Smelly cheese. Smelly cheese? Wakes me up every time. (laughs) I was going to just kind of pat the face a bit, you know? We can try that. (laughs) If you want to go the smelly cheese route. He runs to the kitchen and gets the smelly cheese. Oh, right, wonderful. Big ol' hunk, too, and he's smonching on it, but... (laughs) Are there any crackers? I didn't check. All right, I'll get the cheese, wake them up, if you can get crackers if you want. Great, great. <laughs> <He runs back. laughs> and meanwhile, Mistake is waking these two up with smelly cheese. In the moment that Toby comes back with some crackers, that's when it goes. <clears throat> the goblin wakes up. Just one of them or both of them? I'm going to say just one of them, uh, the alchemist. Alright, so the alchemist wakes up. Oh, cheese, crackers. Would you like either? I personally can't stomach any food right now, but I thought I'd offer. Did you tie them up? Uh, probably, yeah, something okay. to like make sure they didn't run and all the like doors and windows are locked. Okay. Uh, I think it is also very dark in here. Like, okay. this fire is the only light. <clears throat> where, where are friends, ma'am? Where'd they go? They are being healed. They're going to be okay? That's the goal. Then maybe once I see him, then we'll talk, yeah? Do you know, I could really use someone to talk to you right now. And you're here. Ah, uh, can I have a charisma check of <laughs> some sort? Toby looks crestfallen with his tray of crackers. <laughs> <laughs> nah. It, that's that's a three. I have plus five with deception, but that's still only an eight. I don't know what kind of school this is, ma'am, but y'all are killers. So I ain't going to negotiate with killers. I wasn't <clears throat> looking to negotiate. And also, you may remember, I kill neither of you. That's true. Nobody I attacked is currently dead. Well, my rich boy. See your friend? Debatable. Yeah, he sure looked like he was really overprotective of his friends. Yeah, it's a little bit concerning, isn't it? Yeah. Hell, I. He could probably give Boss a run for his money. 
If none of us was around, that's how it is. Well, I mean, it sounds like your boss is kind of shit. Well, he is, but you know, we stick it to the bourgeoisie. Do you? Oh, yeah. How do you do that? They don't care about our god, but their gods, if any damages happen to their gods, they get repaired immediately, don't they? And Ravnica looking all shiny and, and glittery, that's fine. But our statue gets uh, melted down by some asshole, and suddenly there's no funds left. The point, it was an accident. It wasn't intentional. Accidents or not. It still sucks, I know. So... But I will also point out a poor university student is not the bourgeoisie. So if you want to stick it to them, why aren't you going to the ones with the funds and protesting them? Because the boss don't see it that way. Boss S thinks some Gary Grig did this. So Gary Grig we go after. Well, he is the one who made the mistake in the first part, but he's not the one with the funds that is being withheld, is he? Mm. He's trying to raise money for everything. He's working overtime constantly, trying to raise money for your statue. I didn't know that. No, because you just wanted to beat him up. It was usually how we work. <laughs> so, if you want to stick it to the bourgeoisie, and you're here trying to beat up a poor university student who's working overtime to try and help you, uh, it sounds like your actions aren't really meeting your goals. Can you do a persuasion check? <laughs> <laughs> Can, but oh boy. She's not good at this. No, that's a four. Okay. I kind of want to use my inspiration <clears throat> on this one, but yeah. No, that's an eight oh, plus one to nine. Gosh. So, so no. <laughs> but hey, planted the seed. Uh, you know what? Friends. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to say that um, Toby is like next to you and contributes and says, listen, Ga Garrett is harmless. G Garrett's you know, wouldn't hurt a fly in here. You got many of beating them up. That's just just rude, first of all. And 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 she's right. I mean, he works his ass up, and he feeds us too, which is quite nice. So he's giving you advantage on the on the persuasion. <laughs> so I can roll a third. Yeah. Time. All right, that's a fifteen. Okay. If it's, uh, okay. Persuasion. <laughs> it's plus one, so sixteen. This this carrot uh, sounds like a nice guy. Tell you what, get our friends back here. We'll, th we'll, we'll think about it. We'll think about it nice and hard. <laughs> That's a start, I suppose, but really think about what your goals are and how you want to achieve them. If you're trying to stick it to the rich people, going after someone who had to be sponsored to get into this school in the first place, well, really, it's the sponsors who have the money, isn't it? Certainly not many, but the people who run the guilds. Mm people who run the churches with the shiny gold statues? Captains of the universities? <laughs> I have actually broken into Dapplewing's Manor. It's Shut up. fancy, but I don't know about the rich. Now, what I can tell you, I happen to have very similar goals to you. What was your name? Doesn't matter. Well, so I'm... I always look to Michael <laughs> Mix a toast. <laughs> Mix a toast. <laughs> toast? That's such a good alchemist name. Yes, I love it. <laughs> well, I'm Mix a toast. That's suiting for an alchemist. So. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> you know, really, where I'm from, people like me, we are lucky to have a roof over our heads. While all the other people, Live in all these fancy rich homes, all the nice places that all the tourists like to go to. So stick it to the bourgeoisie. I agree with. You just have to make sure you know your target. Hmm. And where you come from? This place have a name? I come from Redfell. Redfell. Has a nice ring to it. It's very pretty in some places. Well, I can't wait to see. Why would you want to go there? It's not a nice place if you're not human. 
We ain't planning on staying. What are you planning to do there? Sticking it to the bourgeoisie. <laughs> you might have a hard time from outside of the city. Oh, you leave that to us. If you want to plan anything for there, let's you and I talk about it first. You would want an inside perspective, right? Sure. As soon as I know her name. Mistake. Pleasure. Pleasure to make a friend. Now, can I have some of that cheese? <laughs> <laughs> How far we've come. Mistake used to hate Gary. <laughs> now yeah. there she is defending him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you've just witnessed uh, Professor Julian casting his ritual. It took a little while. He was muttering to himself, and slowly, a lot of that that energy that he sucked out of the plants starts to seep out of him and onto the dead bodies. And then eventually, he comes back into the room. Looks a little, a little dazed as he stands up, <sighs> cracks his neck, and then says, Aurora, you know what to do. And Aurora steps out of the room for a few minutes, and he takes a seat and looks at the three of you. So what are we going to do about this little situation? Uh, I... Don't know, but thank you so much. Yeah. D did everything go okay? Hmm. They'll live. That one over there might uh, take a while to grow his head back. <laughs> <laughs> might not want to be seen in the spotlight for a while, but they'll live. You look a bit mortified. You okay? Uh, I... Uh, still processing. Thank you for bringing them here. Now, let's address the lion in the room. Griffin, please sit. This can't happen again, you realize that, right? I've never uh, done that before and I, I don't wish to make it a habit. Rage, was it? Yeah. <clears throat> Do you drink tea? I haven't before. Do you want some? Sure. He pours two cups. Does not offer the other guys tea. Just, just Griffin. <laughs> Actually, no, no. He offers Gary because he looks traumatized. He, he offers Gary some calm. I would also like to remind everyone that Gary is in like very burned clothing. <laughs> I'm very badly burned. <laughs> like. Gary himself is okay, but I'm basically imagining that, like, most of the top of his uniform has just, like, kind of fallen to threads, uh, and the only thing that's, like, fully intact is his apron, because that's probably <laughs> okay. fireproof. Costa's going to paint a sweater for Gary. <laughs> <laughs> As you're doing Thank that, you. though, um, Professor Julian pulls out, like, a uh, little bottle of, like, pomade, tosses it at Gary, roll dexterity's every throw. 11. <laughs> it like hits you in the head and it like falls on your hands but you only catch it because it hits you in the head. Apply that to the burn marks. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Griffin, I've only seen one other student in my life kill another student. My Rose. Uh, once again, he looks very dazed, so he looks like he's about to fall asleep at any moment. No one understood her. Much like I am assuming you feel misunderstood. Therefore, I am not calling the captain. My Rose at least had an excuse, Griffin. She had a terminal illness, something magic cannot cure. I taught her all my best tricks, how to use plant life around her to her advantage, give her more energy, but ultimately we knew it wouldn't matter. We knew where this road was leading. I knew that everything I did 
was a stole. You see a tear falling down his cheek, and it burns him. He's just... Uh, and he just, like, wipes off the tear. The day that Rose killed a student, I found myself feeling very similarly to how I feel now, Griffin. Because I understood her. Death is a tool to me. Death was a certainty to her. So she learned from me, and she used death as a tool, and she killed a student to, to give herself just a few more years, which she did, and she was expelled for it. But no one knew how broken inside she was, except for me, Griffin. So I'm asking you not to follow rules, not to obey Captain Dappling, for I have my own feelings against her, but to avoid a very frightening road that I personally have been down. I don't wish you to go down that road, Griffin. Do you wish to go down that road? No, sir. That's the first time I think he's ever called somebody, sir. <sighs> Not even his dad. Wow. Good. But you I don't know how to control it. We can certainly work on that. And why do I still feel justified in it, too? You said he took your ring. After breaking into our house and threatening violence. Right. But the ring is what instigated this. Perhaps whatever it is you're dealing with is something that you need to confront your family about, not people who anger you. Maybe. Just a thought. Alright. I mean, he, what are we gonna do with it? He, 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 uh, like was about to pat you in the back and then... <laughs> nope. No, not, not there, there yet. yet. No. What are we gonna do with Tiny Head? Oh. It's not like we can tell him that they got knocked out and then he woke up with a small head. What are we gonna tell him? They're gonna go after Gary. Griffin, I fix catastrophes. Your business is your business. <laughs> and you hear her, a knock on the door. Aurora's like, they're ready. Great. Excuse me for just one moment. And he steps out of his cabin. The door's wide open, so you're able to see this. Aurora was able to page like 10 poisonous snakes. And Professor Julian kneels in front of the cage of snakes, opens it fearlessly, and sticks his hands inside. Ah, uh, the snakes start to wriggle and twitch as he sucks out the energy out of them, and all that's left is just a bunch of snake carcasses. <sighs> and he walks over to his plants and brings his plants back to life. <laughs> just like, there you are, my darlings. They look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's an energy. Life is energy, Gary. Don't look at me that way. Uh, I'm very thankful for what you're doing. And I'm sure the plants are worthier than the snakes. I do hope you all have a good night. Thanks for visiting. <laughs> this was lovely. <laughs> He turns into a bat and just flies away. <laughs> Leaves them at his house. <laughs> he sees all my niece's friends. He's like, yeah. you should ask me. We should go. Uh, right? Probably send them all back to Ravnica now. I mean, do we make them up? Does anybody have some smelly cheese? <laughs> <laughs> So let me get this straight. This American guy, he, he, he fucked your friends over and then you were gonna, you know, rip him off and you got distracted by a book? Come on. It was a very expensive magic book and got me into the school. Did it at least have like, you know, pretty people in it for you to stare at? Like, what was so interesting about this book? Uh, it was a magic book. Oh, okay. He like looks over at his alchemy belt like, I get it. 
<laughs> exactly. You know, if it was a very expensive, fancy looking alchemy book that could teach you a whole bunch more stronger alchemy techniques, I bet you'd also be interested because then you can learn from it and use it again. Oh, I do love me some learning. <laughs> and then you guys walk in on this like, oh, this is awkward. Good cheese. It worked. Yeah, it woke these two up. Well, one of them more so than the other. And the other two woke up as well. Good. So I'll now- I would say one of them like ran up to hug his friend, if they're not tied up. Mm. You okay? You're right. <laughs> oh, what about Grooks? He's gonna have a headache for a little while, but he'll be fine. I, I think the growing of the head kind of stalls the waking up process, but he, he'll be alive. He's just he's just still knocked out. So they're alive. You said you were going to tell us things now. Mm, mm. Puts down the, the plate of crackers. Right. I ain't gonna talk with him here, though. Griff, would you head upstairs? Fine, yeah. He goes to bed. Or goes upstairs, anyways. <laughs> Whew. Gotta get rid of that guy. It's gonna bring trouble. Hot-headed like that? Mm. One of you threw fire at me twice. Yeah, well, we did warn you. Just saying. But we told you we didn't have the money. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Look, your friend here, just telling me something, you know, you got good friends, kid. You got good friends. I, I don't even think Rook's over there would have stood up for me the way... You were going to tell us things like how you got in the school. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, no, uh, this janitor guy runs the janitor's department. He was happy to oblige, gave us some uniforms and... Fame. Here we are. That was his name, yeah. So that's it, you just bribed Fane and he let you in. Yeah. He gave you what you needed. Oh yeah, no, I mean, fellas seem happy enough to take our coin and business and, you know, gave him a couple of contacts overseas, he's doing his thing and we're doing ours and he asked no questions, so. Nice guy. <laughs> Could have done with a few less babies, but, you know. <laughs> I really hope you just mean the word, not the actual yeah. child. No, 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 just, just he, he, all right, I was Always going to have please. a lot of questions otherwise. Well, that's no more concerning than what I was worried about. Why was you worried about? I was worried it was more than just fame. Uh, can you all please go home now? Um, I don't have a hundred gold, I don't have eighty. We did start a fund so I can give you ten gold. Uh, I still need to be able to eat and I have other things that I was saving for. 10%, huh? So start, and if maybe you didn't come back here. And let Croc Tower continue to contribute to the Croc Statue Fund. Okay. Okay, okay. We'll take your 10 gold and we'll start a payment plan. Okay. But in the meantime, I might need some collateral, something I can hold on to and give back when we get more gold, anything. Listen, if you know, if you really want to c come back here, you know where to find us. You can, can you just leave us be? It's been a stressful night. I think that would be best for everybody here. And I'm going to get a suggestion. Fifteen. Fine. Good. All right. Untie me now, please. Gonna use Mage Hand to untie. <laughs> he takes Gary's 15 gold. Counts them in front of you, too. Okay. All right. But hey, I'm serious about this payment plan. We'll send an owl to your tower, say once a month, give us a few gold at a time. We can start buying iron. And we can start building this thing. Boss will be happy. Fine. Please leave now. Thanks for a lovely evening, folks. <laughs> and they just leave. So, um, what should we do about Griff?
Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us again this week. This episode was recorded in Watertown, Massachusetts, also known as the traditional land of the Pekoset and Nanantum peoples. I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of the talented musicians that helped bring this podcast to life with their amazing music. We've provided a link to their web pages in the description. I would also like to thank our talented players Tyler Rubin, Amelia Mercatoris, Rin Garnett, Michael Yang, and Nikki Aguilar Thompson. This story would not be the same without their wonderful creativity. I've been your host and DM, Alex Aguilar Thompson, and I hope to see you here again next week for another episode of Roleplay Radio.